Okay. So the first group of questions we got were regarding uh, what do you need to do yoga? And uh, what are the differences between types of yoga? And how do I find out which one is better for me? Also me. So, I, okay, I will, uh, what do you need to do yoga? Absolutely nothing. Willingness, I think, is the only thing you need. Uh, yeah, if you have a space clean and uh, with good air is enough. Uh, then the rest, this kind of cubes, the mat, is a plus. But basically to <clears throat> practice the physical part, you just need a, a clear, clean and, um, how do you say, with air, uh, well-ventilated well space. Well-ventilated. Not, not, uh, not in the wind. These are the, what the masters are saying. Um, that's for the physical part. For the rest, yoga can become wait, can become a practice that you can do it even in the bus, working, driving, eating, including sleeping, or actually before sleeping. Um, I know here in the West we are uh, constant to the fact that uh, yoga is a physical uh, improvement. It's a physical activity. The purpose from what I learned is uh, not this, is the fact that it helps you uh, calm the mind. And let's see if Avi has something to add. Um, if we look into this, there's a yogic scripture called Bhagavad Gita. In case you're familiar with that, and uh, there's a chapter which says yoga begins when you hit the rock bottom. So if everything is happening smooth in your life and you don't have any challenges right now, most likely you will, you can pick up yoga, but you will not continue yoga. But once you have hit the rock bottom and this can happen, you know, break up divorce, health condition, losing job, uh, pandemic. And then all of a sudden you will wake up, okay, I need to do something. And that's a good beginning to start taking a deeper, closer look at life. When we are super comfortable, it is very hard to start self-search. If you are in the comfort zone, basically you are not doing yoga. Now, moving to the second one, was uh, types of yoga. Avi will start on this, I feel it. We can start. Uh, well, what exactly is the question? The question is, uh, what, are the di what are the differences between types of yoga and how can I find out which one is uh, better, more appropriate for me? Oh, well... Yeah, that's a that's an interesting question. I was talking about this yesterday with somebody. See, uh, you have a hardware which is your body. You have a software which is your mind, and you have an energy system which is uh, the source of power. Now, you need maintenance for your hardware. You need maintenance for your software. You need maintenance for the energy source, as in to have efficient energy source in your system and uh, the different branches of yoga are somehow categorized like that you do hatha yoga for your physical body i mean at least you purify the body with hatha yoga then you go into raja yoga which is predominantly connects to the mind then you go into jnana yoga which is understanding what's going on inside you what's going on around you and obviously when you tap into the dimension of uh, when you start experiencing changes in the energies and you feel the butterfly in your stomach and other things and you say that my chakras are waking up, that's a good point to start working also on Kundalini Yoga and the Kriya Yoga. So there can be a sequential steps of doing each of these branches. And uh, once said that, I would also differ from what I have just told you that it would be a good thing to start all in the same time because 
it's not that you're growing your body first and then your mind and then your energy. They are tot crește împreună. Everything is growing at the same time. So, de ce nu? Știi? So, to do something all together would be a good uh, having a smooth blend of all the practices in, in your sadhana will be more advisable. One said that, uh, one more thing, uh, we might also sense that we have an, uh, how you say, attachment or we are inclined to specific kind of practice. An agitated person will feel that let me do uh, several rounds of dynamic practice because that's their familiar zone, comfort zone. Whereas if we go deeper into our understanding, we might sense the need is very different. Maybe that person needs to cool down and take more contemplative practice. Whereas another person who is predominantly uh, static and doesn't enjoy moving around will say, let me start practicing meditation. Maybe that person needs 108 rounds of sun salutation. So we have to counterbalance and analyze the need, not the want. What uh, I can add to the traditional uh, yoga Avi mentioned, there is also Bhakti Yoga. Because at the end of these trials on uh, Hatha or Jnana or Raja, uh, even Patanjali says uh, that uh, what you can do, you can forget all of this and go directly Ishvara Pranidana, meaning surrender to the Supreme. And this is called uh, Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga, which have also good... Uh, There is also practice there called uh, Mantra Yoga. Uh, Traditional, there is also uh, Swara Yoga and Tantra Yoga, but uh, it's a bit more, uh, it's working more on the energy, the balance of the energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, now these are the traditional styles, let's say, no, practices, not styles, practices. What I think maybe the question was regarding uh, what is available on the market right now. And available on the market, I know you don't find, uh, you rarely find bhakti yoga practices or uh, jnana or raja. Satsang is a form of raja or jnana. Uh, you find uh, ashtanga yoga, you find which is very good for the body. You find uh, ayengar yoga, which is uh, both of them. They are coming from Brahmacharya uh, students, Padabi Joyce and Ayengar. Ayengar yoga. The difference is that is very focused on. Uh, the perfect alignment of the physical posture. They have uh, invented uh, this cube, stripes. There is even a chair, a yoga chair. So if you are interested in uh, developing a perfect uh, physical posture, which can help you for a very good Instagram post, Iyengar Yoga is uh, is very good. Then you have what's um, new? Osho. Now you have the new Osho Sadguru. Yogi Bhajan with Kundalini Yoga on the energy. Then you have the more popular Hot Yoga, Bikram Yoga. Goat Yoga, Wine Yoga. <laughs> Beer Yoga. Beer Yoga. <laughs> you find them all. As long, uh, I don't know, Dalai Lama said that whatever practice, he was to- referring at the religions, but I can think we can uh, extend it to the practices. As long as the practice or the religion makes you a better person is good it depends a lot on uh, your uh, kind of energy the kind of quality you have if you are an active person ashtanga yoga might be exactly what you need to to get into this uh, philosophy if you are more on uh, more calm or uh, after a pregnancy in yoga for example another one which is uh, new let's say from the new age yoga could be the one so as long as you have the willing to try You started, you are on the way, you are, uh, you integrated a bit. And it was another question here, uh, it's okay? Yeah. Oh, there was another question regarding books to read, to understand better the philosophy of yoga. He mentioned earlier Bhagavad Gita. Uh, it's a bit complicated for, uh, he speaks from an Indian point of view, so he's very open emotionally so for him is okay to he he heard about it when uh, he, uh, he was a kid i assume for us bhagavad gita could be a bit uh, difficult 
to understand the practice, to take it as a uh, epope, epope, how should I say, uh, as a trilogy, not a trilogy, like, like, uh, like uh, we have here in Europe, uh, the legends of the Olymp and things like this. It's an interesting book, but if you want to get into yoga, there are simple books, like uh, the one, uh, what's it called, Autob Autobiography of a Yogi, of um, what's Yogananda. It Yogananda, you have the Deepak Chopra who have a good book on the seven steps of yoga, something like this is the title, which is easy way to understand Patanjali, Patanjali, of course, Yoga Sutra, then you can go deeper with easy studies on Vivekananda, Dayananda, Krishnamurti. That's a deep dive. If you want to go even deep, you go in uh, Zwara Yoga and you go in... Then you get to Bhagavad Gita. But until then, there is uh, enough books on the market for uh, this. Start. It's same thing with the practice. You start the book, you understand and you feel it helps, you go on. Now, drop it. Uh, if I can add to that, don't cut your practice time and invest that in studying books. So the priority should be doing the practice. If you know that you have been practicing six days per week, uh, you are regular with the practice, you have done that for six months and you have a, um, you know, chronic pain, like, like that a chronic question coming from within and it's like, Pushing you to figure out why I'm doing what I'm doing, go to the books. But the one of the best books that we ignore studying is our own body, mind, and the complexity. So there, there are many beginners, and please don't mind me if I'm I'm not trying to undermine your yogic journey. I consider myself as a beginner. Uh, there's a tendency to look for an answer in the book that the what Krishnamurti or Yogananda or anybody will say it in the book is their version of the story. We can get inspired by it, but we cannot copy paste and use it in our life. So you, you have to figure out your truth, your journey. Uh, so on that note, be careful on how much time you're investing in studying. I'm not suggesting that you should not read. Please do read, but don't stuff yourself, your neurons with information only. Even Patanjali mentioned this. He says, at the end, when you get all the knowledge, you drop the knowledge. You forget everything and you go in meditation and you see uh, what's inside of you. <laughs>